I'm going to take you on a journey through time. I'm going to start in the Carolingian age, on that side, and we're going to move to the Gothic age, which is on this side. And I'm going to do this by pointing out a number of script features and showing you how these evolved over time. So we're talking about a script that was active in the 9th, 10th, 11th centuries, and then from the Gothic period, which is around 1225 in script, um, we're, we're getting a, a very different type of book. And the interesting thing is that between 1225 and between the late 11th century, we have a development which we'll show through these two manuscripts, namely a development from the Caroline Minuscule, the one script, to Gothic uh, textualis or book hand in uh, around the early 13th century, and that's the one on this hand. So let's do that. The development from Caroline Minuscule on that side to the Gothic textualis um, is essentially a total um, transition from a round script that took a lot of space on the page to a very narrow script that was very condensed and that introduced a lot of new features. Um, the main features that changed are the formation of feet at the minims, so where the little minims of N and M in the Carolingian age all turn to the left. Um, the ones in the Gothic age turn to the right, and this seems like a very insignificant uh, detail, but it's actually something that scribes paid very good attention to. And um, we have evidence that this shift started in the very early 12th century. So when you look at this specimen from the 9th century, which is Caroline uh, Minuscule, you'll see that the minims are either, the first two, for example, of the M, are either going left-left and the last one perhaps right, or will be straight. Um, or all will go down straight, and it will be, it's quite clear in the, in the sample. Whereas on this side, you'll see that the three minims in the M will all turn to the right. And scribes, interestingly, all over Europe started to make this shift um, around the same time. We have um, statistical evidence that shows that in uh, 1110, about 14% of scribes in Europe were sort of doing the Gothic way of writing an M but by 1120 it was almost 70%. So this is a very dramatic shift in a very insignificant detail that was nevertheless very important to scribes of the age. The other feature that um, is starting to shift is what we call angularity. It's where round forms, as they are present in Caroline and Nuskel, become uh, more slanted. They, so, for example, the top of the O will get a little flat part of the R, which is nice and curved in the Carolingian age, will get a little, uh, what is sometimes called a ski slope, down to the middle of the, of the letter. Um, and this also is something that becomes a standard feature in Gothic manuscripts, but it's also something that develops very slowly um, over the course of the 12th century, with some peaks, for example, um, just after 1100. And what I find the most interesting feature, however, um, in this shift from Caroline Minuscule to Gothic um, is what we call biting or fusion, which is where two letter forms, two round letter forms, start to slowly connect and overlap um, and ultimately start to um, lose one of the strokes that form these pairs. Um, we see them first, for example, in uh, PP and BB, the letter combinations, as you can uh, see. But um, they also start to appear very quickly in the in letter pairs D, E and D, O, and very slowly also in other pairs, for, for example, H, H, O, H, E. So whereas in the Carolingian age these letters would be separated, in the Gothic age, from around 1225, as in this book, they would be totally connected and even overlapping. So that process, biting and fusion, fits in this general pattern of the 12th century, which is, um, as I explained, sort of a going towards a more compact letter, putting more words on the page. You can imagine if you start to connect letters and you take strokes away from these pairs, then ultimately you gain a little space at the end of your sentence, which you can fill with a new word, and therefore you ultimately will save a number of pages per choir. So this is a very significant change and fits into the pattern of other changes in the 12th century.